welcome. This land is God's land and God's spirit dwells here. We acknowledge the Wadarong people here in Geelong, traditional custodians of this land under God. Together with our First Nations sisters and brothers, we face some significant changes in our world. May we draw together in our humanity and kinship as children of God in this great South land. Welcome to this Sunday's worship time. I'm Lloyd Walker and I'm one of the lay preachers here at St Luke's Uniting Church in Hyden. Today I'm back in our worship space here in the um, church building as we think towards that time when we will be able to again come together in this space. Our theme today is one in God's love. Let's come to a time to open in prayer. Lord, we praise you this morning for the love that grants us freedom and for the grace that allows us to dwell in peace. We praise you for the sun that shines upon our endeavours we, and for the moon and the stars at night, which remind us of your glory. We thank you for the many good things that you have bestowed upon us. Help us, O oh God, in this time of worship and beyond to have a heart that exalts in your grace and goodness, to have lips unafraid to proclaim your praise and minds which are focused on living. According to your glorious and living word, we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Ascended Lord Jesus, we adore you. Once you lived a human life, subject to limitations of time. Now you are the same yesterday, today and forever. Once you were limited to one particular place, now you are present wherever people turn to you. Once only those who met you face to face knew you. Now your divine love extends throughout all the world. Ascended Jesus, Lord of time and space, love as wide as life, we adore you. Amen. Friends, our world has become increasingly fragmented in recent years. Countries in dispute, leaders who seek to create difference and discord rather than find common ground. It's actually very sad to me that it has taken a new and dangerous virus to force countries and communities to work together. And yet, even in recent weeks, we have started to see division and selfishness breaking through again. At times, our church has been equally divided and not being true to our Saviour, our God's call to be one body. Therefore, let us sincerely seek the mercy of God. Let's pray. Merciful God, please show us ourselves as you see us. Give us insight into our fractured world and communities that we may be capable of genuine repentance and renewal. Convict us of all sins of indifference, prejudice, self-righteousness, enmity, or sectarian egotism. If we need gentle rebuke, please do that for us. If we need confronting and breaking down, then please do that for us. If we need healing and then painful rehab therapy, please take us in hand and exercise us for your glory. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Now hear the words of affirmation. My sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus know this for certain. There is no personal or churchly sin that lies outside the remedy of Christ's love on the cross. There is no evil that cannot be conquered by the resurgent power of the risen and exalted Lord. To those who turn from darkness to light, there is forgiveness and a new day. Accept from the hands of God the free gift of liberation and healing. It is yours for the taking. Thanks be to God. Amen. You recall that 
before um, we went into this period, I was showing the people here at St. Luke's how to do um, the passing of the peace. So let's continue that sort of tradition as we think about potentially coming together again. So the peace of the Lord be with you. Let's hear our first reading. After Jesus finished saying this, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son so that the Son may give glory to you. For you gave him authority over all mankind so that he may give eternal life to all those you gave him. And eternal life means knowing you, the only true God, and knowing Jesus Christ whom you sent. I have shown your glory on earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. Father, give me glory in your presence now, the same glory I had with you before the world was made. I have made you known to those you gave me out of the world. They belong to you and you gave them to me. They have obeyed your word and now they know that everything you gave me comes from you. I gave them the message that you gave me and they received it. They know that it is true that I came from you and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you gave me, for they belong to you. All I have is yours and all you have is mine and my glory is shone through them. And now I am coming to you. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. Holy Father, keep them safe by the power of your name. In the name you gave me, so that they, may, that they may be one, just as you and I are one. Friends, as we reflect on that reading, you can now join us in song or just listen as we sing For You Deep Stillness from Robin Mann. verse 6 to 12. When the apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? Jesus said to them, the times and occasions are set by my father's own authority and it is not for you to know when they will be. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up to heaven as they watched him, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away, when two men dressed in white suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus, who was taken from you in, into heaven, will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven.
I'd like this morning to reflect on this concept of one in Christ. We are at the end of the Easter season, a season this year unlike any I have ever experienced. Perhaps you are finding it the same. I've participated in many memorable and moving activities and services linked to the Easter story, the Easter period. But this year, I've perhaps felt more like those first disciples, unsettled, unsteady, and really wishing I could go back to the way things were several months ago, before everything seemed to be turned on its head. I love my Christian family and gathering in groups, sharing hugs, singing and celebrating, but this Easter time has been different. Like the disciples, I've been wondering, is it okay to do this? Is it safe to meet in this way? How do I share my love for others without causing harm? We are not frightened by Roman soldiers or powerful religious leaders, mostly admittedly. It is the threat of sickness and possible death from a virus that none of us can see. This uncertainty was palpable when John's gospel was written. John wrote a unique gospel. It is quite different from the other three in its style and how it describes Jesus. God's envoy to his children, the perfect priest. And you'll find more about that if you're interested by reading the Hebrews letter that's a bit later on in this in Bible. So today's reading doesn't reflect probably how Jesus prayed. It's a carefully written farewell prayer. How the writer probably felt Jesus would have prayed or summed up everything before he began that Passion Week. In our era, I'm reminded of Martin Luther King Jr's last speech just before he was assassinated. And this is a speech where he reflects on what he's been through and what he looks forward to. And he comes with that famous phrase, I've been to the mountaintop, and talks about looking over, over to the future. Jesus in today's passage seems to be reporting in to God, but it's for us to hear it just as much. These 11 verses tell of who he is and his God-given authority and close connections with God the Father and Creator to whom he sought to return. His dedication to helping everyone to know God, passing on God's words and inspiring them to believe in God's salvation and his role in bringing eternal life, bringing God's kingdom to all through abiding love. But let's focus on those verses after verse 9. Jesus is asking God to unify and protect the disciples after he leaves them. In verse 7, it's reported, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. These surrounding verses are all about relationship. They're all about love, closeness. John's gospel is full of the word abide. Sometimes it's translated as to make your home in. This intimacy and need for unity is what crowns this key prayer of Jesus in John's gospel. It is echoed in our Acts reading that we also had this morning. According to Luke, he's recording the events around Jesus' ascension that we celebrated on Thursday as he returns to be with the Father. The disciples want to know when will all the promises from the prophets and even from Jesus about the Israelite kingdom, you know the things, good news for the poor, freedom for the captives, um, the year of the Lord's favour, when is that going to happen? But it's a bit like a seed planted in the earth days before. The disciples haven't realised that it's already begun. Jesus calls them to be ready and the Holy Spirit will make them and us the agents of transformation in the world. And that culminates in Pentecost, which we celebrate next week. A bit like that seed bursting out of the ground as the new church gets underway. 
So as I said, next week we do celebrate Pentecost and it's the coming of the Spirit on the gathered disciples. So let us find ways to be one when we join next week, united in carrying God's love into our world. This morning I've found some grevillea. It's got the tinges of red there, but it's not fully developed yet. But we know that it will become red. Maybe you could find a red candle or maybe a tea light like this. And maybe when we come together next week, you could use these, maybe put them on a birthday cake and light them to celebrate the coming of the Spirit and our oneness. Remember that key theme of Jesus' prayer in John? So that they may be one as we are one. We are a people united by the one true God, wherever we are. We are called to be people of love and reconciliation, welcoming the stranger and sharing the good news of the kingdom of God, now at large around the world. Let us come into time of a prayer for the people and I'm drawing from the Uniting Church's President, Deirdre Palmer's prayer that she's posted. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you call us to love you with our whole being and to love our neighbours as ourselves. At this time of upheaval and distress for nations and people across the world, may your love hold us together. May your love be the lens through which we see each other and your world. Lord Jesus Christ, you are present with us as one who knows our suffering. Bring comfort and peace to all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, work, connection and hope for the future. May we embody your compassion. Responding to the suffering of our neighbours, our families, our friends and strangers with generosity. Life-giving spirit, you weave us together as the body of Christ. Strengthen our life together, even though we are physically separated. Nurture us in faith and discipleship that we may bear witness through our living to your abundant grace and liberating hope for all people and the whole of creation. And Lord, this week we pray for those who will be returning to workplaces and to perhaps schools here in Victoria. May you give them confidence and your assurance. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ, our life and hope. And we pray as he taught us to pray. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So let us go out from here with a blessing. People of the church, that you may go into the world with courage. In the name of the Holy Friend, I bless you. If we think that there are no spiritual enemies around and within us, we have already lost the battle. If we think that there is no spirit of grace, mercy and truth available to us, we have forgotten our birthright. If we expect the greater unity of the church to come without pain, we will look and wait in vain. Yet if we dare to love others with the same love with which Christ has loved us, Christ's great prayer will be closer to fulfilment. Now the overflowing grace of Christ Jesus, the embracing love of God and the invigorating friendship of the Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Join us as we sing, We Are One in the Body. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity will one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, 
by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love.